Hi and welcome to Full Project. In this video we'll be covering the Corsair H100i GTX for this uh, build that we're going to be doing shortly in a couple of videos. So in particular we're going to be doing the unboxing of this CPU cooler and we're going to be doing the new rebranding version of the H100i V2 which is slight minor revision of the GTX that we just seen a sampled picture of and it just happens that uh, we purchased this one on a fairly good sale so we went forward and purchased this one but before we begin with the uh, the unboxing I had one little uh, comment about the wrapping as you can see there's an image here that shows a warranty void void warranty if removed sticker on the wrapping paper which seems to seem that you're going to be warned you're going to be avoiding the warranty if you take off the wrapper so it could be just a shipping uh, handling uh, warranty service of some sort but it just brought a bit of humor when I when I open uh, when I remove the wrapping so let's proceed with the unwrapping experience the unboxing of the Corsair H100i V2, which is the rebranding of the GTX H100i. Uh, they've um, done some minor, minor revisions to it. And this is to cool down the extreme desktop Intel i7. And here's the model right here, which is the i7-5960X for the LGA 2011 V3 socket, which is for the X99 chipset motherboard. Now, this is a component that contains a nine cores, nine cores or 16 with the virtual cores. Now, what I want to show you is I is this cooler in particular. Uh, this is to keep uh, cool this processor because it's going to be running fairly hot. And as we open this up, there's a few little things here. That uh, are pretty interesting. So we have the warranty papers, a uh, little manual here. Uh, this is pretty detailed. There is a information for the the AMD, and there's also a Intel uh, portion. Uh, fairly easy to follow. And uh, this is little things that some may want to keep uh, keep in mind is the heatsink does come with uh, thermal paste. Uh, this, in case, is a type of paste pad so when it gets on your processor it kind of turns into a type of paste uh, so that means you don't need to go out and buy your own tim which is thermal interface material and here we have these are the fans so there's two of these and the material seems doesn't seem all that great if you let's say buy a, a fan from Nuktua. Uh, the Nectua feels like it's more designed for vibration and so forth. I may have to change this, but for now we're just going to keep it like that. And here are the connectors. So these are the two connectors that goes to the fan. So you plug one fan here, the other fan there, and then go straight to the top portion here and this is the heat sink uh, and it comes out of there where you plug in this portion here the pin the three pin on your motherboard on the fan the CPU fan and that's going to power your fans and just remove the bag and this is a little cable that you're supposed to connect to the the heat sink where the pump is and all that and this right here 
is the connector that you plug on your motherboard on the USB. So my question was, how am I going to test the pump without having to plug into a motherboard? Like it seems I will have to get, I'll have to plug this into a motherboard. And this connection here goes on the heatsink. So correction, that connector is called the Corsair Link, which is not required to activate the pump and the fans, but it is required to access various controls through the USB port on the motherboard. So if you rotate this around. Now you see here the cable for the fans. And on this side here, right there, is where you plug that little USB cable. So I suppose there'll, there's a uh, probably software for this as well. And this is where I got all the uh, material. So you got the two back plates for uh, okay, you have one back plate and you have this here which is the portion that locks down the head. So this part here will go right on top on your CPU. So that would be the back plate there, the blue black, and then you would put this on top. And then you have these little notch here, that's where the heatsink is gonna it's gonna lock in. So you can see little locks here, little teeth. So it goes on top here like that. And then we'll just lock in. So now we just uh, took out a couple of uh, all the components out so you can see the fans. So there's two fans, there's a little bag with uh, your uh, screws and your attachments. And you have that USB cable to pump the, uh, to turn on the pump. And you have the back plate and the, uh, the connector to hold and, and snug your, uh, your heat sink. And uh, there's no CDs, there's no additional component, like if you want to change this color here, uh, because uh, you can get uh, this part here in blue or red, uh, you will have to purchase these separately. So you have one piece here that you can change, and you have the one on the, uh, the head piece of, of the heat sink where the pump is. So just looking at the fins, and these are the fins where your liquid's gonna cool, go in and then cool down. Uh, you don't see any marks. It's uh, pretty well done. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see anything from this view, but uh, I don't see any nicks or damages or scratches. And uh, it's uh, overall, it, it looks pretty good. And, uh, yeah, so overall it looks pretty good, pretty straightforward. Much heavier than I thought, but uh, we'll give this a try. We'll plug in the pump into a motherboard. I'll have to find that and see how we can test that for 24 hours. So, look at we just installed this on the motherboard, and uh, just for information regarding the USB connector, this is for the cross the Corsair Link. Uh, it's allow you for you to use the Corsing Link software, which I believe you have to download. Uh, if you notice, uh, I'm going to turn it on. And for noise purposes, we'll see how it runs without the fan activated. You can barely hear the pump. And uh, it's connected on one of the fan wires. Uh, these ones, but not these ones, but the other one is connected on the motherboard the three pin connector for the fan. And as we turn on neon, for six of uh, still kicking. I 
here we see the LED light from the, the pump, uh, from the heatsink, the cooler. Uh, you can hear the hard drive here running. And you can hear this fan right here running. Now if I get closer to the pump, there's just a little fine, fine hiss. The noise is as loud as the hard drive, which is the old hard drive here. Other than that, it's pretty quiet. So we'll have this running for roughly 24 hours, but for noise purposes, we'll uh, hook the fans on just to see how loud it gets as a setup, just for, for general idea. And you'll see the light on the LED of the cooler. So both fans are running. They're set push uh, air inside the computer so that we can have a general idea. Overall, I don't see them at all. I don't hear them. You just have the faint hiss of the pump. And we'll leave it running for that 24 hours. But so far, so good. Slight change. We're connecting it straight to the CPU fan. Connecting right between the RAM and the CPU heatsink. And let's see if the noise of the fan is going to be increased. The speed of the fan seems to be stable. Not as fast or slower than before. And the same here for the fan on that location. This is the case fan, we put that back on. It's uh, roughly the same. This one's actually running slightly faster. So there you have it. After running this for roughly 24 hours, uh, everything seems fine. Uh, there's no... I don't notice anything odd or defective. Uh, you can hear a slight buzz for the uh, the pump, but it's very minor. Most of the noise is coming from the hard drive, like I stated before, and these uh, older fans. But mostly uh, the hard drive is causing the loudest uh, buzzing noise, or high pitch noise. Uh, the pump is much lower in noise. And uh, the fan here, it's not spinning as fast as I would like, but this is probably because of how it's set up uh, regarding the motherboard. Now there's one thing I've, I've changed is over here is I, cl I plugged in the fan of the CPU on the uh, connector that's on the pump to allow for, for the CPU fan to run. Uh, the CPU is running at roughly 88 Celsius, uh, which is uh, way too hot, so I was required to have it have the fan running. Now, this is what I've used as a software, just to keep an eye on the temperature of the computer itself. Uh, there's a misleading information here is the fan, uh, the fan speed, it's only uh, keeping track of the RPM of the CPU fan, not the other fans. So for the software here, uh, it's somewhat misleading, but it gives you roughly an idea of how much uh, voltage is being sent through. Just to explain why the uh, the other fans aren't running as fast. And here you see the 54 Celsius. That's the CPU temperature. Without the, the small fan running on the heatsink, 
it went up to 88 and the heat sink itself uh, was reaching 40 uh, almost 50 Celsius when I checked it when I measured it so I didn't want it to go even further for a 24 hour running Now regarding the Corsair Link software, uh, on the Corsair website, this is where you will have to download the software. And within the software, you will have access to this uh, type of layout that you can adjust fan speeds for various settings on uh, in your computer. Uh, set the speeds for, for your fan, for the LED, and measure the uh, various features of uh, of your Corsair product and this is through the Corsair link which is connected through the USB connection on the motherboard now there's a uh, important information regarding the software itself uh, we were testing it on the Windows XP however uh, the software does not work on a 32-bit operating system but if you have Windows XP 64-bit this is the version you wanna download and install and run on that operating system if you have the latest operating system like Windows 10 I would suggest to use the latest version which is this version up at the top so this is the ending of the unboxing if you have any questions uh, you can always contact me and ask them right away otherwise you can always wait for a follow-up on the total build so thank you for watching